times have been a bit tough so I thought I'd um, reach out and ask for another sponsorship from our Cthulian friends. <laughs> video we're going to look at the nameless for dead zone third edition the nameless are a multi-racial group of aquatic creatures there's some that look more bestial like the incas which are squid oct octopi sort of like creatures You've got ones such as the Ferromites, which kind of like the um, squid lower halves and um, crab upper halves. And then you've got the uh, Magamites, which are basically bigger versions. Uh, well, no, they're more like the um, things from Fallout. The, um, the bipedal crab creatures, um, big ones, that sort of thing. They are mainly a peaceful race. So why are they in Dead Zone? Well, there was a a religious subgroup of them called let's see if I can pronounce it properly, the Ulug. I think that's how you pronounce it. U L dash U G. I think that's right. Um the GCPS passed through what is called the Rift, I think it's called. Um the yeah, yeah, I think it's called the <laughs> Rift. Um, the GCPS went through, the Nameless sort of welcomed them in as best they could because the languages aren't really compatible between Nameless languages and human languages, I guess. So they traded best they can, there were a bit of um, war breakout, disagreements, that sort of thing, but in general, not too bad. Until the religious group of the Nameless thought, these human worlds, these are right for taking over. Let's begin crusading. So that's basically it. They are basically doing Cthulhu Crusades. <laughs> Except without the um, red crosses and the white clothing and the arm. Well, they have got armour, but not quite the same sort of thing. But yeah, they're kind of basically doing <laughs> religious cru Cthulhu crusades. <laughs> You'll need to be on page 82 of this book, of the Force List book. And the first leader is the Psychotroid. Speed 1, 2, range 5 plus, fight of 6, survive 5, arm 1, 3 hit points, size 2, 60mm base. They've made it bigger. Hopefully Mantic will include one in future because at the minute I don't believe any of, any of the starter boxes or blisters that the Psychotroid comes in has a 60mm base. It's just a 40mm base at present. Uh, Beast, Recon 4+, plus, Resilient 2, Tactician 2, and Tenacious. Uh, the splat is Aura of Dread. Choose one non-pinned enemy model within two cubes and line of sight of the active model. Move the target one. Move the target model one cube directly away from the active model. If the model enters a cube with an enemy model, it will, it will initiate an assault action, but may only roll to survive. At the end of the move, mark the moved model as pinned. If the model was in an 
Occupy Cube it must break away to leave the cube. Models with the construct solid or, ve or vehicle keywords are unaffected by this rule. I would argue, but it would I'd say need FAQing that this includes models with the bike keyword because they count as vehicles, but that's just me. Um, it's got three weapons, it's got Brain Freeze which is range 4 Psychic Stun, Mind Control which is range 4 Psychic Suppression, and Hyperkinesis which is also range 4 Psychic Invigorate. For victory points, 36 points. It ain't cheap, but it goes, gives good support abilities. You've got Mind Control which can suppress, you've got Hyperkinesis which can invigorate, so if a model's already activated, you can activate it again. And then you've got Brain Freeze which can stun people. Which ain't bad. Uh, the Aura of Dread. If you've got a fair few close combat models. And a fair few models in general. This can be really effective. Move them out of combat. They may die from that. Get them into combat. They may die from that. <laughs> Tons of options. Or make them run off the side of a building. They may die from that. <laughs> um. It's also not that easy to kill. Uh, Resilience 2 is always helpful. And what else has it got? Uh, survived on 5s. Uh, it's got Tenacious. So, Orb of Dread with Tenacious is always good. Uh, tenacious is if you have to run out, well, flee a cube from an enemy model, you minus 1. Dice from for breaking away, which is horrible. Um, Psycho Joys are pretty good. I wouldn't say they're my favourite leaders, but I don't think it's a bad one. I don't think it's too bad. Next, we have the Ferromite Prime. Speed of 1 2, no range stat, fight of 4, survive 5, armor 1, 3 hit points, size 2, 25mm base. Beast, Defender Shield, Recon 5 Plus, Tactician 1, Tenacious, Drop Suit. No idea why it's got Drop Suit. Pass. Uh, the Splat is hunkered down. The active model gains a solid and tough abilities for the round. The active model may not perform a advance or sprint action this activation. Does that include using command dice? But yeah, that's not a bad one. If you are against a lot of suppression this will be really really useful if you've got against a lot of grenades or grenade launchers or mortars and the like again this will be really useful uh, so I've got one weapon the massive claws which are close combat AP2 3 victory points 24 points it's not a bad one not a bad one um, good support ability good combat capabilities not really many downsides. I mean, Defender Shield in size 2, you could put it in with, I don't know, uh, some Riflemen, they'd be armour 2. It's not bad. Or put it in with, let's see, who we got here that could be good for that. Um, b -b 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 Uh, the catered, like I said, yeah, you've, you've kind of got options. Um, tough, tough's really useful. Um, give it to a rifleman, I mean, give it to a Goliath now. Seven, <laughs> seven health with solid and tough. Ooh, that's nasty. Uh, next is the Blight. Speed 1 2, range of 5, fight 4, survive 4, armor 1, 3 hit points, size 2, 25mm base. Uh, recon 5 plus, resilient 1, tactician 1, and tough. Uh, its splat is caustic spittle. The active model may perform a free shoot action with range 2, it burns. If the active model has no shoot stat, it will use a shoot stat of 7 plus. Honestly, there's no downside to that because even if it's not got a uh, shoot stats, you burn on fours. So, 
no downside whatsoever. It's got two weapons, it's got the Corrosive Blast which is range 3 AP 1, it burns, and the Ravenous Bore more, which is Close Combat, Frenzy 1, Toxic 1. So, could potentially cause extra damage. Uh, 3 victory points, 32 points. Uh, I like the Blight a lot, and considering what the Splat does, that's going to help quite a lot. It survived on 4s. Was resilience one and tough. It's going to be a hard one to take down. Mm, very hard. But I mean, the caustic spittle itself. You use it on something like an inkler or an inka or a scuttler because they the models are literally so small. You can have them run up, and it's a free shoot action. So you can have them sprint, and then use a splat to burn things and like I said things burn on fours so it's not going to be hard for them to at least use a lose a wound I'd say unless it's like armor two or three which what do you expect but on armor one things or things with no armor this is going to hurt this is really going to hurt them uh, next we have the spawn a new leader mm. speed one two range of four fight of four survive five Arm 1, 4 hit points, size 3, 40 mil base. Recon 6 plus, resilient 1, tactician 1, tenacious. Uh, before I go any further, the, the spawn model you get, I think you can still get it from Dreadball, but it's been repackaged into the Overdrive starter box. Well, the Overdrive main box as it was. Um, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Unless you look on eBay, there's not really many other ways to get this model. Um, which is a good job, you only need one of them. But I digress. The splat is from the depth. Oh, sorry, I haven't read the rule things. Uh, Recon 6 Plus, Resilient 1, Tactician 1, Tenacious. Uh, from the depth is the splat. Deploy a free unactivated scuttle model in a cube that contains a model from your strike team and no enemy models. In all ways, this new model acts as a member of your strike team and victory points will be gained for killing it. Um, Scuttler. Um, Scuttlers have got hordes, so yeah, this could be really useful. Hoard them up, then have them moving towards the enemy. Yeah, this could be really, really powerful. Uh, it's got two weapons. It's got the Ripping Tentacles, which is close combat. Friends of two, Smash. And Lashing Tentacles, which is range 1, AP 1. 3 victory points and 34 points. I've not tried this leader yet, but I might have to. It's got a lot of health. It's got resilient. Um, the Ripping Tentacles have got Smash 1. So with it being size 3, it's probably going to get extra dice for that. And with Smash, it's gaining an extra dice. So... For most things, it's going to be on four dice in close combat. No, five dice in close combat. <laughs> and 34 points. That's not bad. I mean, all the leaders aren't bad. They're under 40 points. Um, honestly, my favourite is the Blight, myself. Um, that's the thing about the leaders. There's not really any cheap ones, as it were. Uh, cheapest is the Ferromite Prime for 24 points. Most leaders so far have been... They've only been expensive if they've been um, good at everything, a.k.a. Forge Fathers, but the nameless ones you have to be a bit more sneaky about. Or, in the Blight's case, burn everything. <laughs> yeah, but all the leaders have their place. There's no real weak ones, I'd say. They all have their uses. Um, put in the comments below if you think I'm missing something or you think one's better than the other or one's a bit naff. So next we have the troops and specialists starting on page 83. First one is the Inca. Speed 1-2, no range stat. Uh, fight of 6, survive of 6, no armour. Two hit points, size one, 25 mil base uh, ink, ink sack, which essentially can shoot um, smoke. 
I think it's two cubes. Allow me to look in the book, the rule book, because it is here. Uh, once per game, a model with this keyboard, keyword may deploy a smoke marker in the cube in the beginning or the end of its activation. In addition, when this model is killed, place a smoke marker in its cube. So essentially, you are getting a, a free smoke grenade on this model that you can place in the same cube as it, which isn't bad. Also, it drops a smoke grenade when it dies. Um, I've used these um, sort of effectively. Sort of, um, yeah. And it's got teeth, which is close combat. One victory point, eight points. They're cheap, cheap troops. If you want a lot of the really good stuff, not bad, not bad. Um, dropping the smoke down <laughs> is can be really frustrating for your opponent. It really can. And next we have the scuttler. Speed 1 2, no range stat, 5 to 5, survive 6, no armor, size, sorry, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Uh, Agile, Beast, Evade, Horde. And it's got pincers, which is close combat, 1 victory point, and 7 points. Um, it's got all them keywords, but okay, it's not really as powerful, well, as effective, should I say, as the Inca. But if you've got a lot of them, you can really get the horde ability working really well. Plus, evade, you know, that can become quite useful. Uh, so, I've on sixes, though, I don't think I'll have many chances of using it. But if you've got enough of them, and if I suppose if you've got enough and you combo that with the spawn splat of, from the depth, it's really gonna help them, I think. Next we have the Gunslinger, speed of 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive 5, armor 1, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. It's got Hacker, not sure why but it has. Uh, it's got, it's a troop. Uh, the Inca and Scuttlers are also troops, I do apologise. Uh, Gunslinger is a troop, uh, the twin crystal pistols. Range 3, Rapid Fire, Prey, Weight of Fire 1, 1 Victory Point and 13 Points. Now, coming back to the rule book, just to tell you what Prey does. A known, it's nothing to do with them being a religious sect. Um, where is that? Uh, some factions mark targets with a triacinic shard or pheromones to attract predators. If this weapon rolls a success on a shoot or assault action but not blaze away, place a prey marker on the target model. Friendly models targeting a model with a prey marker receive plus one dice to fight tests. This effect is not cumulative. Um so I'd say that lasts that lasts until the end of the game, um, and armor doesn't work to get rid of the um, prey markers. I'd say myself, but that's just me. Uh, gunslingers, if you want cheap prey markers, yeah. Other than that. It's got hacker, I suppose, in them sort of missions. I can see the point. Other than that, nah, nah, nah. Uh, next, we have the assassin. Speed 2 3, no range stat, fight of 5, survive 5, arm 1, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. It's got beast, a jump pack, and stealthy. Uh, it's troop. It's got claws, which are close combat weapon, frenzy 2, 1 victory point, 13 points. It's a cheap troop for what it does. Um, hasn't got any in the close combat, but it's got stealthy, so you're not going to be able to shoot it in the open. It moves pretty fast. And it's a troop, so you can unlock specialists and support with it. So, I don't think it's bad. Um, friends is 2, rerolls 2 dice, you got a jump pack so you can jump over gaps and falling off high buildings won't affect it as much. 
I don't think that's too bad. I don't think that's too bad. And next we have the Rifleman. Speed 1, 2. Range of 4, fight of 6, survive 5, armor 1, size, sorry, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Resilient 1. And it's troop with a crystal rifle, range 10, no AP, and it's got prey, eight, 1 victory point, 15 points. Now these are 2 points more than the gunslinger, but they have a hell of a lot of range. These are kind of like mini snipers if you will. Because they've got range 10, you can shoot from all across the map and it won't matter too much. You're shooting on falls, which ain't bad. Uh, you're also a troop, so you can unlock things, which is great. Uh, prey markers, yeah, you can put them down pretty easily, I'd say. Um, you've also got resilient one with one armor, so you've got a fair to middling survive. Of course, if you get into close combat with them, I think it's pretty much dead because it's got, only got a fight of six. But 15 points for a mini sniper, it's not bad, I don't think, it's not bad at all. Next, we have the carotid. Speed of 2 3, no range stat, fight of 4, survival 5, arm 1, 2 hit points, size 2, 40mm base. These have changed, they used to be on 25mm, I believe. Um, hopefully, Manticore have changed this. Um, they kind of, if I can just grab one, because I do have one on me. Um, you can get a lot of these and the ferromite from the Dreadball team. Yes, some of them metal, some of them are them um, PVC rustic plastic things. I'll just show you here. This is what it looks like. This is what the metal one looks like. The one that's specifically for Dead Zone looks a bit bigger, but I assure you they they all are of similar sort of size. They're kind of shrimp-like. Uh, it's got Beast. Um, it's a specialist with razor claws, close combat, AP1, frenzy 2, 2 victory points, 17 points. Not that expensive. Um, but it is a specialist which is a little bit of a problem. But it's got frenzy 2 with an AP1 weapon. Uh, 2 victory points, yes, but for 17 points. That's not bad. Uh, arm 1, fight on 4s, size 2. So for a lot of times you'll be potentially getting extra dice. And you're fast. That's that's one of the main things of them. Um, before they used to be troops, then specialists. Both times, I don't think they ever got used. I could be wrong, but I don't think many people used them. Now, for how many points they are, and for what they do, I think they're going to be used a lot more. At least I will. I'll give them a go. Next, we have the Ferromite. Speed of one two. No range stat. Fight of four. Survival 5, armor 1, 3 hit points, size 2, 25mm base. It's got Beast, Defender Shield, Drop Suit and Tenacious. Uh, it's a specialist, it's got massive claws, yes it has. Uh, 2 victory points and 20 points. Which is pretty decent I'd say. With an AP2 weapon, fighting on 4s, 3 hit points. It's got Defender Shield, so essentially being armor 2. And if you've got 2 in the same cube, they're both being armor 2. Though, what you could do is have a Ferromite um, backing up two Riflemen, so making them armour too. Uh, yes, the Ferro makes Ferromites an expensive Defender Shield for them. But, they've got three health each. So, I really don't think they're going anywhere. Anytime soon, I don't think. Um... Maybe get one or two of these. I don't. I don't think you should get too many. But if you do get the Dreadbull Nameless team, then you're gonna have about three or four of these. Next, we have the Magnemite. No, not that one. Speed of one two. No range stat. Fight of three. Survive five. Armor two. Four hit points. Size three. Forty mil base. Beast tenacious. Uh, it's a specialist with massive claws, 3 victory points and 35 points. Now, I would say this is slightly too expensive what it is. It fires on 3s, yes. It is size 3 and 4 hit points. Also, yes. It's got AP2, okay. But 
But the thing is, though, survived on fives, and arm two's nice, but considering how many points it is, I mean, let's look at some things that are of a similar sort of thing. You've got the Ripper Mauler, you've got the... Um, boo, 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 boo. Where are they? You've got the uh, Peacekeepers. Mm, peacekeepers aren't really a good comparison, are they? Uh, Terratons. I mean, Terratons, I think, are a slight bit cheaper, aren't they? Uh, 30 points, yeah, they're still slightly cheaper. Um, I think the Magnemite's slightly too expensive for, for me, in my opinion. Uh, it's probably about, I'd say about 3 or 4, maybe even 5 points too expensive, but hey, that's just me. It's not like they're bad or anything, far, far from it. It's just, I'd rather um, have kept that Defender Shield ability. That's the only thing I'd do. I don't know why they took it off. Next, we have the Needle Drone. Speed of 2-3, range of 6, no fight stat, survive 5, no armour, 2 hit points, size 1, 40 mil base. Which is, which people have said, was it on one of them? The flying base it's on is 40 mil. It's spot on 40 mil. Uh, Agile, Hacker and Psychic. Uh, it's a specialist, it's got Psychic Burst, which is range 2, a Psychic Blast, 1 victory point, 10 points. They're not they're not expensive, really. Um, blast just throws people around, doesn't do any damage. Uh, can shoot people through walls, I guess. Um, uh, I've never used these, and I don't think that's going to change. The problem is... I get what they're trying to do with the shooting, and considering what it is, I don't think they could have made it any different. But that's the problem, they didn't need to. I think they've put that limitation on them themselves for no reason whatsoever. It's a shame really, but I think it's one of the few models in Dead Zone that I don't think is ever going to be used. Next we have the sport starting on page 86. In fact, it's only on eight, page 86 because it's only two. Starting with the Bathamite. Speed of 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 4, sorry, fight of 5, <laughs> survive 5. Armour 3, 5 hit points, side 4, 60mm base. Beast, solid and tenacious. Uh, it comes with massive claws, which are AP2. 3 victory points and 27 points. Now you've got a choice of 3 upgrades but each Bothamite can only take 1. Uh, they're each an extra victory point. Uh, you've got the Crystal Cannon which is range 8 AP 4 Prey Weight of Fire 1 and plus 8 points. You've got the Psionic Disruptor which is range 4 Psychic Suppression which is plus 3 points and the Crystal Launcher, which is range 5, indirect, frag 4, prey, uh, plus 10 points. So, either plus 35, plus 30, or plus 37. Um, that's not bad, actually. That's not bad. Even if you take the Crystal Launcher, you've basically got a mobile mortar that can defend itself. Uh, the Sonic Disruptor has got Psychic Suppression, so if you're lucky you could suppress someone and then charge in. <laughs> or you could indeed just suppress something for someone else to charge in. You've got options. Uh, the Crystal Cannon, just an anti-tank weapon, though it has got Prey on it, so that can be helpful. Uh, the Crystal Launcher also has Prey on it, so that can be quite useful as well. Um, I know I say that the Forge Father's indirect weapons aren't that great because they've got Headstrong, but with the Prey thing on it, that mitigates that resistance from for Forge Father's somewhat. 
Um, you could use it for close combat, but then you've got the Goliath for that, which we'll get onto in a minute. Can't be suppressed, and it's tenacious, so if you want to flee from it in close combat, ain't going to be easy. Next we have the Goliath. Speed 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 3, survive 4, armor 2, 7 hit points, size 4, 60mm base. Beast, smash 1, solid and tenacious. It's got crushing more, which is AP3, and the lashing tentacles, which is range 2 knockback. It's 5 victory points and 48 points. It ain't cheap, but come on. It's got 7 hit points. With surviving on fours with armor two, it's fighting on threes, and because it's size four, chances are it'll be bigger than most things. It's also got smash one, so it's also getting plus one dice in close combat. So even if you're going against a Strider, you are going to have four dice as standard, and AP three, fine on threes. It is still ridiculous. It's a shame it's not got tough anymore. But if you pair that with the Ferromite Prime, that can negate it somewhat. You've also got the Bathomite with the Psychic Expression, so yeah. If it gets in close combat with something suppressed, and most of the times the thing that's suppressed is going to be smaller than it, it's going to be on three, four dice for smash, one dice for charging in. One dice for being bigger, one dice for being suppressed. You can be on seven dice. <laughs> wow. Um, that does mean all the st stars have to align, but you know, it's not like it's not. Un it's not like it's going to be hard to do. Plus, because of how cheap the in inkers and the scuttlers are, you could potentially throw two or three in the in the in a hundred and fifty point force. I ain't lying. I've seen it done. It ain't pretty. <laughs> Next we have the Living Legends starting on page 86. First one is the Terror. Speed of 2-3, no range stat, 5-4, survive 5, 1 armour, 3 hit points, size 2, 25mm base. Agile, evade, resilient 1 and stealthy. Uh, it's got Ravenous Moor, which is close combat, AP1, Frenzy 1, 3 victory points, and 24 points. I suppose as a close combat character, it's not bad. Uh, moves pretty fast, can't be gay. You can't get extra dice for shooting in the open because it's got stealthy. Um, it's all shades of pretty, pretty good. Um, I suppose it's kind of like a... Oh, hang on, that's, what's it like compared to the Caterid? Uh, both fight on fours. The Terror's got Resilience, Stealthy and Evade and Agile. So you can pick up items with the Terror. Okay, whatever. Um, weapons, not quite as good. It's some points cheaper. Um... Yeah, Catarid is better, if I'm honest. Um, but as it's not, the Terror is not a specialist, you're not taking up a specialist slot, so... Swings and roundabouts, I guess. Uh, next we have the Fear. Speed of 1, 2, range of 4, fight of 5, survive 4, arm 1, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Resilient 1, stealthy and tactician 1. Uh, it's got Ripping Tentacles, which are Close Combat, Frenzy 2, and Shoulder Mounted Phaser, which is Range 6, Weight Far 1, 3 Victory Points, and 24 Points. Um, I suppose if you want the ability to perhaps keep an extra Command Dice, I suppose it's got all that. Um, it's kind of like a Gunslinger with a bit of Close Combat capability. Uh, it's not bad in close combat, I guess. And it's got tactic, uh, resilient one and stealthy, so it's somewhat survivable. Um, it's not bad. I've, um, I don't think I've used it. Uh, no, I've used it as a leader because in second edition it was a leader, but um, 
Um, I suppose if you want some extra shooting, it's not bad, but um, it's 11 points more than gunsling or a rock or 9 points more than a rifleman. Uh, is all I can say. Mm, not sure. Uh, next is Project Oberon. Speed of 1, 2, range of 4, fight of 4, res 5, 4, no armor, 2 hit points, size 1, 25 mil base, resilient 1, scout and stealthy. Has a needler, which is range 5, wait to fire 1 and prey, and toxic shards, which show combat, toxic 1. 2 victory points and 22 points. I don't think. Project Oberon's not bad actually. Um, shooting on fours, fighting on fours. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, gives you some prey markers. Mm, Ralphman's 15, so it's 7 points more. Um, shoots about the same, but it's more close combat. Um, unless you're really bothered about getting close combat. Nah. Um, Next we have Next we have the Living Legends starting on page 86. So first we have the Terror. Speed 2 3, no range stat, fight of 4, survive 5, arm 1, 3 hit points, size 2, 25mm base. Agile, evade, resilient 1, stealthy. It's got Ravenous Moor, which is close combat, AP 1, Frenzy 1, 3 victory points and 24 points. It's a more expensive catered um it's got more abilities on it i guess um it's not taken up a specialist start slot so there's that um i can see a point but it is just a more expensive version of a catered for all intents and purposes next we have the fear speed of one two range of four fight of five survive four one armor, two hit points, size one, 25 mil base. It's got resilient one, stealthy and tactician. Uh, Ripping tentacles, which are close combat frenzy two, and shoulder mounted phaser, which is range six, weight far one. Three victory points, 24 points. Um, it's kind of like a souped up gunslinger that can actually do close combat at, as well, I suppose is the best thing for it. Um, it's not bad. But, mm, um, I'd rather just go with Rifleman, if I'm honest. It's got longer range. Just keep it out of close combat. With range 10, it can afford to be. Uh, it's 9 points more. Yeah. Mm, mm. Finally, we have Project Oberon. Speed of 1, 2, range of 4, fight of 4, survive 4, no armor, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Resilient 1, scout and stealthy. It's got a needler, which is range 5, prey, weight of fire 1, and toxic shards, which are close combat, toxic 1. 2 victory points and 22 points. Now, when I initially looked at this, I thought, give you extra prey markers and toxic close combat, not bad. But when you look at it all together, it's kind of in the same wheelhouse as the fear in a way. Because that's kind of like a souped up rifleman and so is Project Oberon. The only difference is you are getting toxic on your toxic shards. And you're good, really good in close combat. Plus it's not that expensive for a living legend. Um I can see a reason why you take any of the, these Loon Legends because it's a soup top version of something else. But, you know, if you're not too bothered, then I don't think you're missing out any. So, the items then. On page 87, ammo was 2 points, no limit. AP ammo was 4 points, can only have 4. Uh, frag 3 grenades are 6 points, no limit. Smoke grenades are 3 points, no limit. Med pack of 4 points, can only have 1. Energy shield 2 is 4 points, can only have 1. Energy shield 3 is 8 points, can only have 1. They are a C 
Sim Synergy Force. Got that right the first time. Um, each model has its place. There are some that can do multiple tasks, mainly in the leader section, the support section, some of the living legends. But mainly they are there to do one task and that's it. Riflemen, snipe things at the far, give things close combat bonuses. Assassin, speed into close combat. Catered, similar sort of job. Uh, Ferromite, there for close combat and giving people defence shields. Magnemite, really big thing, get into close combat. Needle drone, push people around with blasts. Um, Inca, drop smoke. Uh, Scuttler, be small and horde. So, yeah, like I say, apart from the leaders and the support options, they are all geared to one thing. I mean, even the support options, you could argue very, very easily, each one is geared to a specific task. The Goliath, close combat. It's got a bit of range capabilities, yes, but it is ideally used to get in close combat and just kill things. The Baphomet is a bit of a different one. It's a bit of everything. But this is one of the few exceptions where a jack of all trades plays in its favour. It's big. You can have it as a survive, as a mobile mortar. You can have it as a suppression that can shoot through walls. You can have it as an anti-armour unit. Still being fairly cheap and having fairly decent close combat capabilities. You've got options with the Nameless. The real big problem is with a lot of the models, not all of them, but with a fair few, is you can only get them through the Star Saga uh, link on Mantic, or if you go on eBay or whatnot, and things such as the, um, the Blight, which is one of the leaders, did come with the um, Star Saga expansion, Terror in the Deep. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Terror in the Deep, and also the um, Terror did as well. So they're the only ways I believe you can still get them. And at time of recording, they aren't on the Mantic page, which is a shame. It is a big shame, especially for the Blight. The Blight is fantastic for a leader option but yeah like I say each one apart from really if we're going specifically the leaders each one has their place and if if you know what you're doing you can make them sing I'd argue cautiously on using them as a starter faction while you can no one's saying you can't in fact I don't think any faction you couldn't use as a starter faction. I mean, you don't have to glue most of them. Is that? <laughs> but gameplay-wise, uh, just just make sure you've got some idea on what you're doing. Obviously, but yeah, maybe try out a different faction first. That's just me. So, thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.